Hey, what's up, guys? This is Taylor. Today is Tuesday, the 14th of March, and I'm coming at you with tonight's free video. So usually we film the videos here when the market closes. However, we got about eh, 40 minutes left in today's session. So for now, I'm watching the S&Ps just get a little bit nasty, and we're here for the nastiness. We, uh, we opened up a couple of the call credit spreads today on the pop. So you got the gap up. You got the pump all the way into that daily 200, and from there they've pretty much given up uh, a good chunk of today's move. So now we find ourselves with sell signals on the weekly chart, the daily chart, the 30 minute, the 15 minute, the 5 minute, and the 3 minute. Whole lot of pretty colors there for the bears. So that's a game plan here for me moving forward. Um, you know, the level will change as far as my quote unquote line in the sand. For now that number is 4k. Any rally under 4K, we're going to come on in with some call credit spreads, maybe. <laughs> and of course, in hindsight, um, we pretty much got short near high a day. So in hindsight, and who knows, maybe the market finishes up uh, 50 bucks today, right? A little bit of daylight left. But of course, in hindsight, maybe would have bought a, a couple of puts along with that call credit spread. But that's a game plan, guys. And, uh, you know, none of that is based on uh, the headlines. Right, from my perspective, nothing to do with the uh, the banking crisis. We'll call it nothing to do with the Federal Reserve. Right? JP and the boys has everything to do with the uh, the structure, the structure and the pretty colors. So keep it simple, make it a path of least resistance thing. We've got a weekly squeeze printing a weekly sell signal. So that's quite the marriage. You've got uh, you got compression, right? the buildup of energy, and inside of your buildup of energy. Indicator tells you momentum, structure, all works in the favor of the bears. So being that trading is a probabilities game, for now that points towards a pretty good chance that weekly squeeze fires short. And if it does, I think it's going to be quite a doozy. So you've got sell signals on the weekly chart. You've got a bunch of sell signals here on the daily chart. And now you continue to trade under your three key moving averages. 200 SMA, 50 SMA, and the good old 21 EMA. So that's a game plan on that end, but what I want to show you guys tonight is actually on a monthly chart. All right, we're taking it all the way to to the top of the mountain. Now, like I mentioned, my uh, you know my knowledge of the macro, my knowledge of the uh, the economics of it all, the banking system, and frankly the the Fed and everything they get into, uh, my knowledge of that is all pretty pretty slim. What I focus on is, again, just structure and pretty colors. So, you know, I think human nature to point fingers at things, and for what it's worth, there's there's a lot going on out there, right? Like, there's a lot of uh, a lot of problems developing. So I'm not saying that, you know, everything is uh, sunshine and rainbows out there, but as far as our, our trading goes, to an extent, just focus on the chart in front of you. So... You know, my ultimate signal for uh, a market crash, a collapse, whatever title you want to give it, would actually be here on the monthly chart. So as far as the big three indicator goes, right now all the criteria is met for a monthly sell signal, except a move under the monthly 50. All right. Everything else lines up. Other moving average crosses, momentum, everything lining up here to print that signal. Only if we can break through that monthly 50. So to an extent, that level is uh, subject to change. But we are talking about, you know, 36.25, 36.50. So granted, that's another 200 points lower, but that would be the level we'd have to break to get a brand new monthly sell signal. And with that comes a little bit of, uh... well, things start to get interesting, put it that way. Now, I'm not talking about my own indicator, of course. Um, you know, I think it's got some pretty good ingredients, so... If and when that level gets taken out in that indicator, uh, or that signal prints, not something I would ignore. Right? Could be pretty big implications. So let's hop into uh, the time machine here, and I want to show you guys the uh, the life and times of a big three monthly sell signal. And we're going to go way back with it. So hang tight here. All right. All right, so the history of the monthly sell signal. Now, the whole point, you know, the whole 
that the whole point of showing you this is before a huge collapse, we will get the signal printed. So you go back in history, any meaningful bear market, any meaningful market crash, collapse, whatever you want to call it, before it really gets ugly, the indicator starts to print that sell signal. So we're going all the way back here to the 1970 recession. December of 1969, monthly chart prints a sell signal. It just so happened to do it in a monthly squeeze. And the S&Ps go from a ripe $93 to a low of, eh, we'll call it 65 More importantly, we came down to the monthly 200 SMA. Now keep that level in mind. Then you've got a brand new monthly sell signal in November of 1973, which the early 70s there was about a 40% bear market. Not only did you come down to the monthly 200, we actually broke through it. All right, you had a smaller pullback here in your market back in 77. We'll keep it trucking here. Um, now, I'm not an economist or a historian, so... I did have to lean into Google a little bit to get some context. I was born in 92. Didn't start trading until I was 16, 17. Um, back here, right, you get a couple monthly sell signals. Decent flush. Now, we came down towards the 200 SMA. That was back in 82. All right, pretty nice uptrend. Pretty nice uptrend. And then, my friends... 2001.com crash. Monthly chart prints a sell signal right around July of 2001. At that time, S&Ps are trading around 1,200, and we pull back towards a we uh we pull back towards a monthly 200, eventually putting in a low around 760. So 1,200 to 760. There's your dot-com crash. Then you got the big doozy. 2008 financial crisis. We get our first monthly sell signal in. What was that? June of 2008. That prints around 1300. We go on to put in a low of 670. So the dot com crash. 2008 financial crisis. Now, interestingly enough, we never got that signal back here during. Uh, whoops. There we go. We never got that signal back here during COVID. So I'm not saying we're going to, uh, you know, break 36.25. I'm not saying we're going to get the signal. point I'm trying to make is you go back in history, you look at the uh, 2008 financial crisis, you look at the dot-com crash, you go back even further in time, right, recessions, all that good stuff. Most, if not all, meaningful market collapses, crashes, bear markets. At some point, the monthly chart prints that signal. So from my point of view, if we take out that 3640-ish, right, take out your monthly 50 SMA, that's where I think the door opens for a pushback towards your COVID lows. All right, my downside target would become the monthly 200. And again, I know that sounds pretty extreme, but this is more so just a focus on, on structure and momentum. Monthly chart loses a 21 EMA. Momentum goes bearish. From here, if you take out the 50, then you print the sell signal. Got a lot of room to the downside, right? No previous major levels of support. No trailing momentum moving averages. I would think that would open up the door for an eventual move down towards, you know, these COVID ranges. 2,500, the, uh, the monthly 200 SMA, somewhere in that neighborhood. So, something to uh, to keep in mind, and, you know, as the months go by here, the market continues to develop, we'll, uh, we'll continue to keep an eye out for that signal together. So, I think an interesting look into the past, and then, uh, you know, with that being said, our job, of course, is to trade the market in front of us today. And the market in front of us today has, has a couple things here working in the favor of the bears. So, we're going to keep on shorting these bounces until proven wrong, but for the rest of y'all, hope you found it helpful. If you did, go on ahead and leave a comment down below. Let me know your favorite breed of dog. And I'll talk to you guys in the next one.
What's up traders? This is Taylor from Simpler Trading. I wanted to thank you for watching our video. And if you liked the video, go on ahead and comment down below, hit that like button, and make sure you're subscribed and hit that bell icon to get a notification anytime we upload our next video. And of course, if you wanna watch us trade live in real time with our own money, check us out at simplertrading.com. Until then, trade safe, and I'll catch you in the next video.